Hi guys, so recently we have been hearing a lot about this uh, chat GPT, the new AI that can answer anything and provide you with all the solutions you need. So I was pretty excited about it and I thought maybe I'll uh, give it a go and see if it can really help us uh, in our professional work, in our day-to-day -day work um, and answer the questions and provide solutions. But then another question came up that uh, can it uh, can it take away our jobs, for instance? Can it just take over if it can provide all the solutions and all the ideas? Can it just uh, replace all, all of us and uh, we can just use chat GPT and these kind of AI softwares to get all the answers we need? Um, so let's have a look at it I, and see what I found out. So uh, what I did is that I asked it multiple questions. I uh, chatted with it. Uh, um, about our day-to-day -day work, um, about different optimization actions, troubleshooting issues, uh, trick questions as well, to see what kind of answers I get. And um, then I could understand um, and I could rate their answers uh, to say that whether we can actually rely on chat GPT um, as a solution providing uh, AI or, or not. So uh, first of all, let's see, I asked you a question about uh, uh, low throughput in 5G network. So how can we optimize that? And it gives some uh, some answers over here that you should check network coverage, device settings, software updates, network congestion. So yeah, so it, it really uh, did give some, some important pointers and uh, although it did not go really deep into the technical stuff, but it did uh, talk about uh, beam forming and carrier aggregation and stuff like that. So uh, I think that that's a, that's a good answer overall. And uh, I would say that this one um, is uh, a pretty uh, decent answer from an AI software. So uh, next question, I asked it about, uh, let's say 5G low slot usage. So what can I do and how can I solve it? So it explains what slot usage is and then it again uh, dives down to the reason that it can have uh, a potential bottleneck or why it will be lower. And it talks about coverage issues, congestion, interference. So yeah, so it touches many topics, but it does not really uh, tell um, you about uh, scenarios where you have, let's say, a backhaul congestion and stuff like that. But still, it gives a pretty decent answer here as well. So I would say that uh, it's also a good answer. So then I asked it about uh, KPI optimization. So I said, okay, if I have high drop rate on 5G, how do I resolve that? And it again, it tells you about network coverage and device settings and software and network congestion. But here onward, what I see is that um, any question related to optimization um, on 5G on LTE, the answers are pretty straightforward and they are repetitive. So in all of them, he's talking about congestion, he's talking about network coverage, he's talking about device settings. So it does not give you a specific answers related to a specific uh, question. So it will not talk about uh, the drop rate. It will not, it's not really telling you that you can have because of higher number of RLC retransmissions or you can have a drop because of a ratch drop or you can have a, a drop because of uh, the out of sync scenario N310 scenarios for instance low SINR for instance so it, it will keep on uh, talking about the same four and five topics that it uh, used in the previous answers as well. So not really intelligent, it's more of a, um, more, more cumbersome and more, it starts, starts to get boring after that. So that was it. Then um, I asked it about LTE. So I said, okay, if I have uh, a high PDCCH congestion on LTE, what will you do? And it then over here, it gave a, a pretty good answer. It talks about PDCCH resources, uh, scheduling algorithms, network load, uh, device performance, and network coverage as well. So so it, it seemed like that I'm talking to a person who knows its stuff, who knows about PDCCH, who knows about LTE, who knows about PDCCH congestion and, it's, and the factors that really if affect that. That was a good answer in my in my opinion. So I would say that uh, for LTE perspective, it seemed that uh, it had more knowledge or it had more data to actually uh, pass through, I think. For 5G, because maybe it's relatively new yet, it does not have that much of a data with it. So then I asked a question about uh, what will happen in case of uh, 5G SA network if there is LTE congestion. Now, this was more of a trick question. 
because when we have 5G NSA network, LTE congestion can impact 5G and NSA network because in NSA we have uh, data coming on both 5G leg and LTE leg. But in 5G SA network, LTE congestion should not impact because SA uh, does not have any dependency on the LTE. Uh, SA network only has a 5G leg and no, um, no consecutive uh, LTE leg with it. So in this case, uh, it was uh, very clear. It, sh it said that uh, if there is congestion on LTE, it should not directly impact user experience in case of 5G SA. So a, a very good answer. Many people um, might have been confused with this. So that was a good answer from uh, uh, our AI friend. So uh, I would I would say that it was uh, a pretty decent one. Now then after that, I started asking about a, a bit of a difficult question like this beamforming query. So I asked him that uh, in case of vertical beamforming, uh, which part of the PMI is used? So it talked about PMI, it talked about vertical direction of the PMI, but it did not give the actual answer. In actual uh, answer, PMI has uh, two, uh, two categories, I11, I12. I actually I covered that in my Massive MIMO uh, session. So the I12, PMI index is used for the vertical beam forming. So what I did is I put I, I put up a follow-up question saying that are you not aware of I11 and I12 in the PMI? And I think vertical P, part of the PMI should be I12. And the chat GPT answered, I apologize for the mistake in my previous response. You are correct that the vertical part of the PMI is represented by the I12. And then it talks about I12 and explains how the I12 uh, performs the vertical beam forming. So um, this was, um, um, in a way it was clever that uh, you can actually uh, chat with the, the AI um, and it is uh, in a continuous manner so it has a memory that it has uh, it has been asked about this question before so it retains that memory and tries to solve the issue and then provides you the correct answer but on the other hand if if someone who does not know this and ask this question he might not get his answer because then he was only telling you about this one so um, more of a uh, average kind of an um, kind of a response i would say and then i thought okay uh, how about questions that are empirical empirical meaning that those pe that uh, those activities or those people that have actual experience on on, on a technology they would know that kind of scenario would this uh, chat gpt can can it approximate or estimate those empirical uh, values so i asked him what is the ideal b1 threshold for a 5g nsa network and it explains what a b1 threshold is but it does not give you a number so i i posed a follow up question saying that okay uh, if um, I really want to have a B1 threshold, uh, let's say to start with, what will be a value? It still could not give me a value. So so usually we know that the B1 threshold is uh, in most of the networks, it ranges from minus 110 to one, minus 115, somewhere in between. So to start with, uh, we can start somewhere there and then we can optimize accordingly. But chat GPT, because it hasn't really worked um, empirically it hasn't really worked practically so it could not really give an answer over here so uh, more or less we can say that uh, that's an average response anyways then another uh, question i asked about uh, what is the expected 5g peak throughput so i give gave it the parameters like 100 megahertz 5g carrier and i asked it what should be my expected 5g maximum downlink throughput now it can also be attained theoretically but uh, since uh, uh, it did not have any practical information I think about it so it could not give me a number here so I again I posed a follow-up question asking can you but can you still give me an approximate range for peak throughput expected from a hundred megahertz 5g fr1 system but it could not really give me a number again so um, this one um, I, I really think that even if uh, it did not have um, practical experience or practical data or uh, realistic field data, it could still have uh, obtained this number with calculations uh, based on the theoretical values, but it could not do that. So, so uh, more or less it kept me in kind of a loop. Uh, whenever I asked this question in different, um, in different words, it could not give me an answer and it kept on going into these loops of uh, saying that uh, this is the fr1 this is uh, the features that we can use but it could not give me a number over there 
Similarly, I asked a question about 5G link adaptation. So link adaptation, how it works is that uh, you use CQI and convert it into MCS and then you have an outer loop which is based on a block error rate, blur. So it talked about CQI, it talked about MCS, but it could not talk about blur in between. So I asked a follow-up question asking, what is the typical blur value used in link adaptation uh, in 5G or in 4G anyways, both of them have the same value of around, mostly around 10%, but uh, it could not give me a value. It, it talked about blur, it explained what blur is, but it could not really give me a value. And that again shows that um, the lack of practical field knowledge or empirical knowledge that uh, the chat GPT AI ha lacks. So uh, again, uh, more of a, average answer, not really um, what you would expect uh, from um, a seasoned engineer who has been working with the 5G or 4G for some time. Then another one I asked if this one was like another trick question. Um, in 5G NSA, we have ENDC setup and after that the 5G ratch happens. So if 5G ratch success rate is bad, uh, the EDC setup success rate is not impacted because it is it happened before the 5G RATCH process. So I asked it this question that in 5G SA network, will RATCH success rate impact the EDC setup success rate? And according to chat GPT AI, it says that yes, uh, it will impact. So that was uh, incorrect. So um, what I um, did it, I, f I made a, a follow-up question asking that, uh, but the NDC setup process happens before the 5G RATCH process. So how will 5G RATCH impact the NDC setup success rate? So it says that yes, you are correct, but it still uh, says stays adamant and persistent that you know, even then the RATCH will attempt, uh, will impact NDC setup success rate. So that was wrong, but it is, it's really pers uh, persisted and wanted uh, to say that it is right. So that was, uh, I think, um, a, wrong, a wrong answer. So overall, when we talk about uh, our aspects about uh, optimization and planning and radio performance and RF uh, um, and RAN uh, department, I would say that uh, the AI um, is too generic. It's still, uh, it is, uh, still has a long way to go to really provide answers that um, actual engineers and uh, all of our uh, solution architects that are working uh, in these fields that, that they can provide. So uh, it's still too early for that. So uh, it can it can definitely help us in our day-to-day -day works. It can, if we ask something on Google, we get a number of topics that we have to parse through then to find out our required information. But ChatGPT can help us that if you ask a question here, it will try to give you an answer. Now, uh, the problem with this one is that because it only gives one answer, um, really, uh, and uh, it might be incorrect. So you would not really know whether it's correct or not. But, but uh, but looking at the holistically at uh, at it holistically, we can still say that uh, it might be able to help us out in many of our day-to-day uh, -day professional works. But it still uh, has a long way to go until it reaches up to a point where it can actually take over or replace um, actual engineers. But uh, apart from that, if uh, if we have a look at uh, from the Python coding and programming perspective, it is pretty good. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because I, I asked it a couple of questions about, let's say, a Python program. And for here, I asked it, I want to write a code in Python that can make a GUI. So it quickly gave me the code. I can just click here, copy code and paste it in Python and I, I can just uh, start. So I can ask it for multiple codes and it can quickly give me a code, explain as well about uh, different aspects of that code and Python. And uh, so that is something that I think will be really helpful uh, for the coding and programming parts. Again, um, I, I think maybe I'll make another video on the Python and programming co and coding using uh, chat GPT, a separate one. Um, and then maybe we can discuss more on, to on that topic. Anyways, um, that's all from my side. I hope you like the video. If you do, please help us uh, spread the word and uh, do like and stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye.